Don Peoples, Dead Boat. Let's talk about it. And yeah, let's get into it. So, earlier, obviously, yesterday, General Colin Powell passed away at the age of 84 years old. Obviously, you know, he was the first black U.S. Secretary of State whose leadership in several Republican administrations obviously helped shape the foreign policy for the last half of the 20th century. You know, passed away of complications, obviously, from the COVID-19. Um, obviously, he did take both jabs. Let's go ahead and put that out there. But, you know, they're trying to say he also had, you know, some cancer issues and, <clears throat> you know, stuff like that. Obviously, he lived a full life, you know, living to 84 years old. We should only be so lucky if we make it that long. But that's really not the point of the video. The point of the video is, is Colin Powell <clears throat> somebody that black folks should be proud of? I mean, should we be proud of this man's legacy? When it comes to how he represented us abroad, um, to other nations, religions, people, etc. And, you know, Colin Powell, man, has a lot of blood on his hands. Obviously, going all the way back from the, you know, Reagan administration, you know, you know, this man fought in the Vietnam War. You know, he knows firsthand about American corruption and the things that we've done overseas. But the biggest thing that hangs on his head is obviously the war in Iraq, the fake terror, you know, um, to justify the reason to go over there and kill, you know, millions of people for no reason. You know, this is something that I wouldn't be proud of. And that's a lot of souls on your head, if you know what I'm saying. I mean, when you look at the things that he had to sanction, now, mind you, you know, he's the general, the secretary of state. You know, he has a lot of say so when it comes to sanctioning wars and going over bombing countries, et cetera. Um, you know, he's done a lot of damage in Latin America, you know, with the whole Noriega situation and bombing and stuff over there. It's. You know, the list kind of goes on and on. So is this somebody that we should be saluting? You know, somebody that we should be proud of? Because overseas, people are celebrating. You know, um, this man has caused a lot of harm to people. And I think, you know, following the path that he was going, obviously, you know, having all this responsibility, but selling his people short, you know, promoting such a war that took down something that really didn't need to be taken down. I mean, Saddam Hussein was a bad person. I get it. <clears throat> but he also kept order. Did he have ways of doing it? Yes. But he also kept order in the region where he was at. And, you know, a lot of people try to, you know, make it out like he was hated by everybody. But he actually was loved by a lot more people than that hated him in Iraq. You know, so to justify the war to go over there, <clears throat> you know, to be able to seize there in Afghanistan, you know, taking on, you know, taking over, I should say, you know, uh, the oil fields, the poppy fields, you know, everything was done for criminal gain. You know, nothing had truth behind it. Everything was a lie that we were told. And not only did millions of Iranis and Iraqis, I'm sorry, die, <clears throat> but also thousands of U.S. soldiers, you know, died in this war. Um, and, you know, that's one of the things that he also said that he regretted in his U.N. speech. Um, you know, at the end of the day, you know, a lot of things that he was a part of were not good. You know, a lot of the administrations that he was a part of were not good. You know, these were administrations that <clears throat> funneled drugs into our communities. 
um, you know, were, was responsible for a lot of the backdooring that was going on. You know, this was the Bush's favorite color folk. You know, he received the Medal of Honor for Bush Sr. <clears throat> you know, it, it's it's just crazy what people are willing to do for power or what they're willing to do for a seat at the table. You know, for you to sell out so many people and to green light such a meaningless war that we're still wrapped up into today. You know, basically just getting the soldiers out of uh, Afghanistan um, and that whole sloppy ordeal that's going on. But all that stems from this. So from that great cover up that you was a part of, you know, playing your role, you know, obviously you were rewarded. But for playing your role, you know, you got a lot of blood on your hands, you know, playing this role. You put a lot of families at risk and you took a lot of soldiers, male, you know, female away from their families, you know, for meaningless gain, for power, for greed. It's just something, you know, I can't be proud of, you know, um, as they have the flags at half staff, you know, if it ever was to come out and it should come out now, I think after all these years, I think a lot of the public understands that that situation that caused you guys to go over there was an inside job. And it's so much overwhelming evidence pointing towards it. So I think eventually in the future, you will be disgraced. You will be removed from our history because you were a part of the takeover of our great country. Um, you know, you did nothing for us in your existence but sell us out. So in death, we can't wish you a rest in peace or we can't ask, you know, well, I hope that the Lord forgives because I think everybody is human and we all make mistakes. But when you have so much blood on your hands, do you really deserve forgiveness from the most high? You know, that's a question you really got to ask yourself <clears throat> when it comes to this situation. So, you know, as I sit back and I reflect on Colin Powell and, you know, what he's done for the black community, which, you know, I'm pretty sure he might have donated to some charity or something, but <clears throat> nothing that he can be remembered for, but causing pain, chaos, and destruction, and greenlining one of the biggest takeovers in U.S. history. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he, he cannot be remembered for anything great when death is all that he was a part of. And not doing it in a, in a noble way. See, because people at the top, such as Colin Powell, <clears throat> these type of people, they're in the know. They have roles to play within the whole conspiracy game and, you know, everything that's going on. They actually have a role in this. Not the good soldier or the good general that's actually trying to defend our country um, and, and, and take care of its people and honor other countries and, you know, help their people, you know, these are things that, uh, real men would do, but he didn't fall on that side of the coin. You know, a lot of the things he did, when you look at the history of what he was involved in, it just does not sit well with me. You know what I'm saying? So again, I, I want to believe that you can be forgiven, but I think when you have so much blood on your hands, it's hard to be forgiven. And like I said, he did show remorse for, you know, green lighting that situation. So I will give him that. And hopefully he'll be forgiven for that in the afterlife. Because, hey, who am I to judge anybody and what they do and what they've been a part of? But, man, y'all get in the comment box. Y'all let me know what y'all think, man. Do y'all feel that Colin Powell should be celebrated by the black community? as the first black U.S. Secretary of State 
Um, should he be, you know, celebrated as a great general and somebody who loved people and fought for his country honorably? Or should we call it for what it is and call out the things that he was a part of and what he helped cover up that ultimately are still playing a part in what we're still going through today when you see what's going on with government? But y'all get in the comment box. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Like, subscribe, share the video, hit the notification tab so y'all can tap in every time I drop one. It's your boy, Don Peoples. Dead.